How is Ukraine adapting to the new realities on the battlefield as the war enters its third year? One of the more important but understated ways is through the use of high-quality decoys to waste Russian drones and ammunition. But what exactly does this approach entail, and is it actually working? Let's dive in. When 2023 began, Western expectations for Ukraine were reaching a crescendo. Successful counteroffensives in Kherson and Kharkiv oblasts in the summer and fall of 2022 had revealed serious weaknesses in the Russian military. As Russia looked like it was exhausting itself trying to capture the minor city of Bakhmut, there were high hopes for a new offensive that would cut the invaders' land bridge to Crimea and deal a heavy military blow to the Russian war machine while imperiling Vladimir Putin's political position at home. Unfortunately for Ukrainians, none of these hopes materialized. The offensive in Zaporizhia, which began in June, failed to even reach its initial objective at the city of Tokmak. Despite the delivery of weapons the Ukrainians long desired, such as Western main battle tanks, cluster bombs, and long-range missiles, such as the Franco-British Storm Shadow and American Attackums. Russia, meanwhile, demonstrated renewed momentum, if slowly, and an ability to absorb punishment. Russia may not be in position to win the war as Putin would have liked when it began, but it's still not lost it. Now as 2024 begins, the pendulum has swung the other way, and Western hopes for Ukraine are starting to ebb, which is one of the reasons why renewed military aid is becoming more and more controversial in the United States. As the prospects for victory look bleaker for Ukraine, the country is again being forced to turn to its wits to give it an extra edge and to adapt to some of Russia's new methods of waging war. In comes the decoy strategy. Let's take a look at these decoys and why they have become such a necessity for both sides. The war in Ukraine has proven that drones have become one of the most important parts of the modern battlefield, confirming the results seen in the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia in 2020, when the former used them to completely reverse its traditional military disadvantage. In contrast, Russia paid comparatively little heed to drones when its war began. Its military doctrine heavily emphasizes artillery and tanks. Ukraine's use of drones quickly proved how vulnerable these traditional arms can be when they are improperly supported. Turkish Bayraktar TB2 drones made quick work of slow-moving Russian convoys around Kyiv. In April 2022, these drones reportedly played a role in the sinking of the cruiser Moskva, the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, by distracting the ship's air defense systems and providing targeting information for the Ukrainian Neptune missiles which delivered the killing blows. Later, Ukraine proved the metal of smaller, cheaper, first-person view FPV drones controlled by an operator wearing a headset. These drones can provide surveillance and coordinates for artillery and act as loitering munitions in a kamikaze role. Ukraine has taken out many of Russia's armored assets using these devices, including some of the few BMPT Terminator tanks that it has deployed in the war. Other innovative uses of drones included outfitting them with Cold War-era anti-tank grenades, guided by 3D-printed fins, or even converting old anti-aircraft guns into anti-personnel weapons with the assistance of drone targeting. However, as the Ukrainians invested in their drone forces, Russia gradually realized its vulnerability in this area, especially as it had fewer ballistic and cruise missiles to call upon in the wake of Western sanctions. To that end, Russia began investing heavily in purchases of Iranian Shahed 136 drones as 2022 went on. It was the start of a trend. As the war enters its third year, Russia is gradually gaining superiority in drone warfare and this has serious implications for some of Ukraine's most valuable military assets. Russia now reportedly produces between 330 and 350 Shahed drones on a monthly basis. According to Vadim Skibitsky, the second-in-command at Ukraine's defense intelligence, Russia is reported to have produced over 22,000 of them through 2023. The Shahed 136 is a loitering munition that entered service in 2021. It's relatively small, with a 3.5-meter length and 2.5-meter wingspan. It has a total weight of 200 kilograms and can carry a warhead between 36 and 50 kilograms in weight. Its range is between 1,000 and 2,500 kilometers, with a service ceiling of 4. Its main role is as an attack arm against stationary ground targets according to preset coordinates. It has no remote control. The drone is launched from a rack of five. As the intensity of Russian missile bombardments began to wane, the Shahed 136 increasingly took to the skies. Between January and March 2023, near the height of Russia's attacks on Ukraine's civilian power grid, missiles of various types made up about 60% of the ammunitions, with Shahed drones making up the remaining 40. Between April and June of 2023, the number reversed. 
Shahed drones made up 60% of air attacks and missiles the remaining 40. Although these drones are not nearly as fast or capable, they are much cheaper, and the arrival of the Shahed and other kamikaze loitering munitions on the battlefield heralds the coming of an era where the cost of precision strikes will be much lower than they were in the past. Russia is further adapting the Shahed 136. Toward the end of 2023, Ukraine was hit with waves of these devices that have stealth modifications to help them better infiltrate Ukrainian air defenses. Ukrainian officials downplayed these modified Shahed drones, claiming only that their new black color made them less visible to the naked eye. However, defense officials quietly admitted that this black material was at least partially radar absorbent. The material improves on the Shahed's stealthy design where the body merges into the wing. This coating, likely founded on carbon-based stealth paint, makes these newer Shahed drones more difficult for Ukrainian radars to detect, especially when they are flying close to the ground, as they were designed to do. In addition to large Shahed drones, Russia has also geared up its procurement of smaller FPV drones. In May 2023, a Russian state-owned defense company announced that it will be making at least 3,000 FPV drones per month. Russia also began ramping up production of FPV drones through volunteer groups, which were capable of making thousands of drones per month as well. Ukraine once had an advantage in FPV drones, but that advantage started to dwindle throughout 2023. In November, Ukrainian FPV drone pilots fighting in Donetsk Oblast began claiming that Russia was now fielding them in greater numbers than their own side. Their drones are always in the air, day and night. We can see they've implemented serial production of drones for reconnaissance, surveillance and for strikes claimed a Ukrainian drone platoon commander in the area while speaking to Reuters under his codename Comrade. According to Comrade, the Russians now have twice the number of FPV drones as Ukraine's troops, at least in the Bakhmut area. Comrade was far from the only soldier saying this. Ukraine's forces began complaining about a lack of FPV drones as 2023 wound down. Another drone operator in the area, who went by the codename Yizak, said that it had now become a common occurrence to only have two or three drones to use against 10 identified targets. Russia's greater investment in FPV drones has exposed vulnerabilities in Ukrainian provision methods. While the Ukrainian government has funded the manufacture of larger, higher-flying, longer-range drones to conduct surveillance and priority assault missions, it has not done the same with the smaller, tactical-level FPV drones. Instead, the Ukrainian armed forces have procured these devices from civic organizations and the donations of private individuals. Often, Ukrainian soldiers themselves will pay for the drones. Russia's greatly increased drone capability means that it now has better surveillance than it did before the start of the war. Russia has increased its capabilities in other ways as well. Ammunition shortages have forced Russia to rely less on World War II-style saturation fire methods with its artillery. By the start of 2023, Russia had reduced its volume of artillery fire by 75% from the wartime high seen in the spring and summer of 2022. To compensate for the shortage, Russia got smarter about how to use its artillery. Instead of its usual methods, Russia has adapted to using Krasnopol laser-guided 152mm artillery shells to deliver more accurate strikes on Ukrainian artillery and defensive positions. According to a report by the Royal United Services Institute, by May 2023, the Russians were using their new shells in conjunction with Lancet loitering munitions to better target Ukrainian artillery and other important equipment. For the Ukrainians, adapting to these changes has proven challenging. In 2022, they were the masters of precision strikes with HIMARS and their superiority in drone warfare. While Russia's attacks were comparatively uncoordinated, that advantage waned significantly the following year and was one of the reasons why the offensive in Zaporizhia proved so disappointing for Ukraine and its Western allies. Russia's improved ability to conduct precision warfare thanks to its emphasis on drones and its increased use of laser-guided artillery has forced the Ukrainian armed forces to find adaptations of their own. One of the methods seems like it could come right out of World War II, when the Allies used dummy vehicles and artillery to confuse the Nazi war planners, especially in the build-up to the D-Day invasion on June 6, 1944. In September 2023, Ukrainian forces released footage of one of Russia's Shahed drones diving towards what looked like an air defense system. The drone barely missed its target, exploding in a large fireball a few meters away. However, even if the loitering munition had found its mark, it would have been in vain, because the supposed air defense system was a dummy. Ukraine's dummy equipment includes much more than air defense systems. A report for CNN also showed a dummy American towed howitzer made up of modified drain pipes. These are far from the only dummy weapons that Ukraine has put into service. 
Ukraine's HIMARS systems have long been a high-priority target for Russia. None of them have yet been damaged, however. This success comes partially because HIMARS is designed to be difficult to target because of its high mobility. Nevertheless, the Ukrainians are taking no chances. Kyiv has manufactured units of wooden, replica HIMARS. These decoys are then attached to wooden trucks and hang around near the front. The presence of these replicas serves to confuse the enemy and protect the real launchers. Ukraine was fielding these dummies as early as the summer of 2022, when precision HIMARS attacks on high-value Russian targets began to change the tempo of the war. Tanks are another arm which the Ukrainians have made decoys of. These decoys are often made of collapsible wood and extremely lifelike. Anton Goroshenko, an advisor to the Ukrainian government, said in an interview with The Economist that one would not be able to tell that these devices are dummies even from a distance of 5 meters. Ukraine has also taken a page right out of the playbook of the D-Day preparations. Part of those preparations included creating a fake army with inflatable equipment, codenamed Operation Fortitude. Wood replicas work, but they come at the cost of being heavy and harder to maintain. Vehicles are needed to transport them, and a lot of valuable labor time is spent assembling and disassembling them. By contrast, inflatable decoys are cheaper and can sometimes be carried by a single man, allowing them to deploy much more rapidly. However, these dummy vehicles are also far more sophisticated than their World War II-era ancestors. One of Ukraine's suppliers for its inflatable dummies, a Czech company called Inflatech, uses flexible reflectors which simulate the heat of a gun that has just fired its projectile. These dummies are even capable of producing radar signatures. The products seem to be working, because Inflatech has seen its business increase by 30% since the start of the Russian invasion. Inflatech's offerings include 30 different products, ranging from tanks, armored vehicles, aircraft, artillery, and large weapons. They are typically made from light materials such as artificial silk, which will keep their weight low. 100 kilogram weights are common for its products. The decoys are usually operated by a team of four soldiers and can be unwrapped or inflated within 10 minutes. Tanks are far from the only devices which can be simulated with inflatables. Artillery, mortars, and even machine guns are capable of being replicated in this way. One of the biggest values of the dummy weapons comes in their cost to manufacture, compared against their cost to destroy. To illustrate, Iranian Shahed drones are extremely cost-effective. They typically cost between $20,000 and $50,000 apiece. By October 2022, it had cost Ukraine more to shoot down the drones than it had cost Russia to launch them. Russia spent a range of $11.6 to $17.9 million on these operations. Ukraine spent about $28 million countering them. Russia's increased use of drones since then adds to the financial pressure. The CNN report pointed out that a real towed howitzer could cost $2 million to $4 million apiece. Tanks can cost even more. A modern Abrams tank can cost up to $10 million. A Leopard can cost $6 million and a Challenger can cost about five. A HIMARS system costs about $5 million apiece. Meanwhile, each GM LRS rocket that can be loaded into HIMARS can cost $100,000 apiece. Attackums missiles, which are also loaded into HIMARS, can cost $1.3 to $1.7 million each, depending on the range and guidance system. There are many other expensive pieces of equipment that are high-priority targets for Russia's much cheaper drone forces. The dummy howitzer, on the other hand, costs only $1,000, which puts the overall math into perspective. The inflatable dummies from Inflatech can be much more expensive. The products the company makes for training purposes can cost $100,000 a piece. This is more expensive than many of Russia's drones, but even if these are destroyed, they are much more expendable than losing a real tank, artillery piece, or air defense system. And the decoys have proven effective in their purpose of depleting Russian ammunition. As early as the summer of 2022, before Russia started to ramp up its drone capabilities, Ukraine was deploying the wooden replica HIMARS systems. That summer, Defense Minister Shoigu personally ordered Ukraine's HIMARS units to be a priority after they had demonstrated their effectiveness against critical Russian military infrastructure. Moscow has repeatedly bragged about destroying these systems. At one point, Shoigu and other Russian commanders announced that a new successful strike had been conducted on HIMARS or other Western rocket artillery systems almost on a weekly basis. An American diplomat commented in a Washington Post report from that time about Russia's braggadocio. They've claimed to have hit more HIMARS than we've even sent. Although Russia has long had a history of inflating its combat performance, the Post noted that the Ukrainian decoys probably accounts for some of the confusion. George Barros, a military researcher at the Institute for the Study of War, commented, If the Russians think they hit a HIMARS, they will claim they hit a HIMARS. 
Russian forces very well may be overstating their battle damage assessments after hitting HIMARS decoys. In the first year of the war, these decoys proved particularly effective at degrading Russian combat effectiveness. Russia was using its missiles far more frequently in those days, and according to Ukrainian officials, the Russian armed forces had indeed wasted expensive caliber cruise missiles on the dummies. Each expensive missile used on a fake HIMARS represented a massive drain on resources for the Russian war machine. It's an excellent example of the asymmetric warfare that Ukraine has needed to practice against its larger enemy. Ukraine has other options to make HIMARS decoys too. Inflatex specializes in making reproductions of Soviet-era equipment. However, it has since put inflatable HIMARS replicas into its product line. This might be one of the reasons why the company's CEO, Wojtek Fresser, expects to see double-digit growth for the next three to five years. In the summer of 2022, the company produced about 50 decoys a month. NATO countries are its typical customer, and Fresser did not confirm that his company's products had made their way to Ukraine, but he did say that he could imagine sending an imperiled partner country inflatable decoys. Russia has since been more selective in the way that it deploys its missiles, but the decoys are equally effective against drones. The Shahed or Russian-manufactured Lancet drones, despite being comparatively cheap, are much more expensive than many of the Ukrainian decoys, turning the attritional maths against the invader. The use of decoys against cheaper FPV drones is also effective. Although the costs are not as lopsided in this way, the Ukrainians have used decoys as more than cost sinks for their enemy. Decoys confuse surveillance drones and provide false targeting information to Russian artillery, getting them to waste valuable shells and rockets. Decoys also serve in their age-old role of confusing the enemy as to Ukrainian intentions. Russian FPV drones might detect artillery seemingly stationed to fire on a certain position, leaving other positions vulnerable to the real attack. Russia hasn't neglected dummies either, and Moscow has been putting these kinds of decoys into practice for a long time prior to the war in Ukraine. In September 2023, a drone-captured video circulating on social media, purportedly by Ukraine's 116th Mechanized Brigade, showed inflatable Russian T-72 tanks. The brigade warned Ukraine's armed forces to be careful about how they use their ammunition in response to these decoys. Russian forces have also been known to use dummies of fighter jets like the MiG-31 and the S-300 missile system. The Russians have used more extensive decoys as well, creating simulated radar stations. New technology has made decoys a much more expensive acquisition than that seen in the past. No World War II-style decoy would fool modern surveillance systems. High-resolution infrared and thermal imaging can easily spot fakes. As we mentioned before, modern decoys manufactured by companies like Inflatech mitigate some of these disadvantages. But as surveillance of the battlefield becomes easier thanks to ubiquitous drones, both sides in the war are trying to improve their decoys, creating a new type of arms race. In the T-72 example given previously, the Russians attempted to conceal two of the dummies with camouflage materials and some foliage, but because Russia left them out in the open, they were easy to spot as fakes. High-resolution imagery revealed that they were obviously inflated devices, with smooth sides and corners. Even an untrained eye would be able to spot the difference between a real T-72 and the fake seen in these images. One Ukrainian company producing decoy artillery said that in order to trick modern surveillance methods, decoys needed to be covered in nets and surrounded by dugout trenches to produce more of an impression that they are the real devices. Leaving inflated equipment out in the open was insufficient. As 2024 ramps up, both Ukraine and Russia will continue to improve their drone warfare capabilities. With these improvements, both sides will become more adept at finding targets of opportunity. Anti-drone weapons and tactics will see increased development in the long term, but in the short term, expect both sides to use new and improved decoys to try to confuse and deplete the other's ammunition. What improvements do you think will be made to decoy technology? How will both sides continue to adapt to the other's increased ability to conduct low-cost precision strikes? Don't forget to let us know in the comments and make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more military analysis from military experts.